chance to check this morning, uh, but there's a miracle that tends to happen every day on this feast day for St. Januarius. St. Januarius is a bishop uh, who died in the Diocletian persecution around the year 305. And since the year 1389, uh, there's been a vial of his blood that's been kept in Naples. It's solidified all throughout the year, but on his feast day, it's brought out and it liquefies and you can see it move around in the jar. Did anybody check to see today if it liquefied? <laughs> It happens about three times during the year when they bring it on his feast day, and science can't explain it. It's in a hermetically sealed vial, and, it, and, it's, and it's solid because it's several hundred years old. I mean, he died in the 300s, right? So the blood is uh, very much dried out, but then somehow it turns to liquid again on his feast days. Pretty remarkable. So you can see this on YouTube. Actually, they've captured it on YouTube, so you can check it out and see. Um, it, the Italians are very superstitious, okay? So they always believe there's been a few times in history where it hasn't liquefied and then really bad stuff happens. And so they're always like on pins and needles, like, did it liquefy today? <laughs> but he's not a fortune teller, right? The whole purpose of this is to show that God's power is operative through the bodies of his saints, yes? Didn't we just have the relic of St. Jude? We see that the fact is because the saints' bodies were holy, they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they were transformed through living charity throughout their whole life, that even in death, their bodies continue the work of charity united to Christ in heaven. And so that's, that's and then we see it in some of the saints in a remarkable way, like St. Januarius, that God even allows a little bit of a wink to say, hey, there's a lot more happening here than you understand in the real, in the world, right, of material things, because God's grace transforms nature. Amen? St. Januarius, pray for us. Today in the gospel, we, we see really clearly um, something that I've just been noticing a lot, which is that many, many, many people, especially if we were born in the Catholic faith, um, are like the person who owed 50 days wages. We don't realize what we've been forgiven. And so we don't respond with a lot of love. But I see converts who come into the faith or those who maybe were born into the faith, but they left and had a wild party life and they came back to the faith. They are on fire because they realize what they've been given. But the fact is, friends, is that even if you didn't live a really scandalous, horrible, sordid life, the fact is, is that all of us have been forgiven and given grace that we could not have deserved. And that's actually the, 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 the thing that's really important. And John Ricardo, Father John Ricardo, talks about this all the time. It's like, we have to understand the story of salvation to really understand that it's good news. We have to know the bad news first. The bad news is, as we hear in John 3, 16, Jesus didn't come to condemn the world. Those who don't believe in him are condemned already. The state of humanity is we're cooked. We are lost because of original sin. We are in a free fall. It's like we were tandem skydiving and somebody cut the line and we are plummeting to our death. And we got to have somebody who dive bombs down there with a parachute to get us. Oh, we're going to splat right on the floor. Right? And so that's the truth of the matter is that we were all lost in sin. But Christ in his mercy, God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sin and redeem us. And because he's done this, now we can, we can really rejoice in the fact that we have a destiny. We have a future that's not condemned to death, but something that's full of hope. And so therefore, our whole life needs to be Thanksgiving, which is why we celebrate Eucharistia in the Greek, which is thanksgiving because this is in fact our response to god who has given us everything and if we are not thankful it is because we are not aware of what he has done for us and so we see in this woman who her past is very very colored very checkered but because of the lord's mercy to her she is just so effusive in her love for him that she can't stop kissing his feet she can't stop weeping for joy would that that would be all of us would that we wouldn't be like the person who just like invites Jesus over because, well, we should do something nice for him. <laughs> as if, as if that were our life that just, oh, I, you know, I mean, yeah, we'll just have him over a, a few times. No, no, he's our life. He's our life. He's the kind of guy that even after you're dead, he can make your blood liquefy. Ooh, man, better worship that guy, right? I can't do that. <laughs> worship him. He's the living God. And indeed, doesn't he live in you? Didn't he promise you that those who believe in me will have eternal life and I will raise them up on the last day? It's not like I'll give you eternal life sometime later. No, I'm giving you eternal divine life right now to live in you. And I will also give you eternal life when you die. That's the gift of life. And the saints show us this marvelously. 
So St. Januarius, of course, <coughs> bishop, faithful, but if you were a bishop back in the early centuries, it was a death sentence. It's not an honor. It's not something like, oh, sign me up to be a bishop. No, you sign up to die if you're a bishop. If you're a priest, if you're a bishop, you've got a target on your back, right? And that was the understanding of all of the church, that the leaders, yes, we need leaders, and they're probably going to die. All the apostles did. Most of everybody else in the first few centuries did. And they were happy to do so. Why? Because they'd received everything from God. They knew before Jesus Christ, I was nothing. I was a nobody, right? But because of him, I'm now his son. I'm now his daughter, and I'm more than a conqueror. And I'm not afraid of the bears. He was thrown to bears and eaten alive, you know. So the fact is that he wasn't afraid of any of this. What can they take from me? My freedom? I I'm a slave of Christ. I already belong to him. You know, can they take away my earthly life? Good. I get to go to heaven. Fantastic. Right? Nothing could disturb them. Not life, not death, not sickness, not imprisonment, not torture, nothing. That's what real freedom is. And so we should be grateful for this gift. So friends, let's come before him today and ask St. Januarius to pray for us so we can receive more of the Lord and have his confidence. St. Januarius, pray for us. We lift up our hearts to the Lord and we ask for all that we need for the church that inspired by the witness of the martyrs, she would be faithful even in the face of persecution and rejection. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all bishops and priests that they would have courage to proclaim the gospel even if it costs them their freedom or their lives. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our families that they would be places of communion and love and that all divisions would cease in the blood of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Pray for our parish.